Hello and welcome to the rock cycle. In this video, you'll learn how the three main types of rocks are formed and that all rocks are related to each other. Ready to get rock solid information on the rock cycle? <laughs> Here we go. just focus on how rocks are formed in the first place. So magma flowing out of a volcano eventually cools off, either inside the earth or outside as lava. The magma from minerals becomes igneous rocks. Granite, obsidian, and basalt are examples of igneous rock. Because igneous rock is formed from a liquid, it is considered to be a primary rock or the parent rock. Even though rocks are hard, they can break apart in two ways, through weathering or through erosion. When rocks break apart because of weather elements like heat, rain, and wind, we call this process weathering. For example, a really strong windstorm can blow sand particles against the rock and weather it down like a nail file does to nails or a sandpaper does to wood. When rocks wear away with natural forces like waves repeatedly crashing on the shore, we call this process erosion. Moving water is the most powerful cause of erosion. Riverbanks are eroded by the flowing river water. Gullies are formed when heavy rains wash away soil and fields. Heavy rains can also cause landslides by loosening solid blocks of rock. Wow! Erosion changes the shape of the earth over time. The Grand Canyon in Arizona is actually an example of erosion where it is believed that the Colorado River wears away at the rock to create this magnificent, amazing tourist attraction. During the weathering process or erosion process, igneous rock breaks down. When igneous rock mixes with sediments like tiny grains of sand, clay, silt, or other bits of rock, and it compacts and cements or hardens with pressure, it then takes form another type of rock called sedimentary rock. Sediments are blown around and carried by the wind just like seeds. Usually the sediments settle at the bottom of rivers, oceans, and lakes. And over time, these sediments harden and then grow as more and more sediments settle and harden, settle and harden, and on and on and on until they become layered. Sandstone, limestone, and shale are examples of sedimentary rock. The Grand Canyon is also a great example of sedimentary rock. In fact, geologists, scientists who study the earth, analyze the many layers of the canyon to learn about our amazing Earth. Heat and pressure together change igneous and sedimentary rocks. When the minerals in these rocks change over time by heating without fully melting the rocks, they form new rocks called metamorphic rocks. In other words, the minerals change or morph. If there is enough heat or pressure, rocks can actually be folded and squeezed together and then they harden into metamorphic rocks. Slate, marble, and quartzite are examples of metamorphic rock. When all three types of rocks, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic, melt completely, they become magma again. So this entire process of melting, cooling, weathering, and eroding, pressure and heat, compacting and cementing, and melting again is called you guessed it, the rock cycle. This cycle goes on and on and never ends. In the rock cycle, igneous rock becomes sedimentary or metamorphic rock. Sedimentary rock can become igneous or metamorphic. And metamorphic rock can become igneous or sedimentary. Sounds kind of rocky, but it's not. In one way or another, rocks are related to each other, and the rock cycle proves it. If you want to sky rock it, you're learning, be sure to play our fun online games and quizzes.
And remember to always be clever. Hey, hey.